Okay, so Ryden's going to refresh real quick, and we're going to move on to the next segment. Um, Ryden had an issue, so I'm bringing him back in. There we go. You back, Ryden? Yep, we're good. Awesome. I lost the stream. I couldn't see what anybody was saying. Yeah, no problem, no problem. So the next myth we're going to talk about, um, which is one of my favorites, is relative humidity is an actual a- accurate way to measure humidity. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. That's a, a Relative humidity and humidity are confused often uh, in the industry, and they're so super important to know the difference. So I love sharing this, and um, hopefully this will help somebody. So I'm going to change to a different format here so we can see the bigger screen. Everyone see that okay? Okay. Let's try this. Boom. Okay, there we go. So relative humidity is the percent of moisture in the air versus how much it, how much it could actually hold. It is relative to the temperature. So to illustrate this, we're going to take two, uh, three containers of air, one at 55 degrees. We'll heat it up, and as you would imagine, it would get a little larger at 75 degrees. And at 95 degrees, this same volume of air would get a little bit larger. So three containers at three different dry bulb temperatures. Okay, so what does 50% relative humidity look like in these containers? Well, it looks like this. So if you took each of these containers and filled them up halfway, that would represent 50% RH. And we'll throw some numbers on here because we're going to reference them in a moment. So what do you notice about the water volume in these three containers? You know, it's it's a lot larger in container three than one, right? So that's mm-hmm. the that's the that's the in a nutshell, the flaw with using relative humidity for an, as an indicator of how much moisture is in there, right? Because they're all they all have the same value, but one has a lot less moisture. So it's dependent on the temperature, which is where we can get in trouble in the HVAC business. So, okay, so we're going to illustrate that by plotting these on a psychometric chart. So we're going to take the fifty percent RH line, which is right here. We're going to plot that against the dry bulb temperature of each of these containers. So you'll see 55 degrees is here, 75 degrees is here, and 95 degrees is here. And we'll go ahead and put a little dot here to represent these containers. Okay. So if you're familiar with psychrometrics, what do we know about the psychrometric chart as we go from the bottom up to the top? So as we move up the chart, that's an increase in humidity, the actual amount of moisture in the air. Okay, so you can see three is much higher than one, of course, as we discussed. Dew point is a great way to track the actual amount of humidity in the air. It's not relative to the temperature, okay? So you can see the dew point here, dew point here and here, and we'll go ahead and put some numbers on these. Oops, went too fast. Okay, so you'll see the dew point of container one is 37 and the dew point of container three is 74. So this is illustrating that dew point is a much better, you know, number or way to show the actual amount of moisture in the air. Make sense, Ryden? Yes, it does. Okay. So um, which is better to track humidity? Relative humidity, again, is the value is relative to the dry bulb temperature. Dew point increases in values as the air, uh, moisture in the air increases. Okay, so we'll go back here. So which is better to track humidity? I think we've already talked about that. Um, Yeah, so the point here is just to show that, you know, why do we use relative humidity sensors so often rather than measuring dew point? It's because they're cheap. (laughs) They're less expensive. Um, You know, we do a lot of... uh, make up air units in, and we measure a lot of OA uh, dew point. And we do that by measuring the RH and we measure the temperature because those sensors are relatively inexpensive. And then we calculate the dew point of the air. So, you know, that's the way we do it there. Um, there's plenty of videos on this too, on our YouTube channel. You can go check that out anytime or listen to our podcast where we talk about that more in depth. But okay, so we're going to move on to the next one. Anything to add to that, Ryden? I think you covered that one about as simple as you could make it. Okay. I like it simple. I'm a simple man and I like simple solutions. So, 